Children's Church. Say, do you remember last week when I was telling you that the fall colors up in New Hampshire, like when I've been hiking, have been really pretty, but around here in the Boston Common, it's kind of been just a little green. Well, this past week, we've definitely started to see some more colors outside. So if you look outside onto the Boston Common, the trees are changing colors. Definitely. Are the trees changing colors near where you live? All right, well, let's talk about our schedule for the day. We just did our ah la 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 leluyas. We're about to go see Jimmy. We'll come back here for our Bible time. Then we'll do offering and prayer. We'll go see Amanda. Oh. Oh, wait, no, it's not Amanda because this week we get another missions moment from Miss Cara. So we'll do our missions moment first and then we'll go see Amanda. We'll come back here for story time and then we'll get an update on Amanda's tomato plant in my backyard that is still trying to grow tomatoes. I can't believe it, guys. All right, well, I'll see you guys when you get back from Jimmy. Bye. Hello there, Children's Church. How are you today? As you can see, today I'm wearing a party hat. That's because yesterday I got to see some of my friends outside in the park. And it made me so happy, it felt like a party. Now, there's also a dinosaur on this party hat. But there weren't any, any dinosaurs in the park. But it, that's probably for the best, because they probably would have tried to eat us. Uh, unless we climbed the trees and hit up there or something. Anyway, 
Are you ready to hear this week's jokes? Here goes. <clears throat> what kind of tree can fit in your hand? A palm tree. Get it? Because the, the inside of your hand, the, 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 you know, we call it your palm, and a palm tree is a kind of tree. Mm -hmm. What kind of school do saplings attend? They go to elementary school. Get it? Because saplings are young trees, and elementary sounds like it has the word tree in it. <laughs> What kind of tree grows fruit that tastes like chicken? A poultry. Get it? So chickens are a kind of animal that we call poultry, and that sounds like it has the word tree in it. <laughs> Can you imagine fruit that tasted like chicken? Yeah. Mm. What kind of tree does everybody really like to use for shade? A poplar tree. Okay, that, that one's a little weird. So a poplar is a kind of tree, but it also kind of sounds like the word popular. So everyone would want to use that tree for shade because it's popular. And that one needs a little work. Okay, I have one more, and I actually learned this one from my friend Mary Beth and her brother Peter. Here goes. <clears throat> what is a tree's favorite drink? I've heard they really like root beer. I get it. Uh, isn't that an awesome joke? Thank you so much for sharing with it with me, Mary Beth and Peter. Now, I'm really excited to tell you all about today's word of the day. But I need to give you a little bit of background first. Like I said, I was super happy to see some of my friends yesterday. And when I got home, I asked my mom, why can't we just be happy all the time? She said that the answer is kind of complicated. But a big part of it is that all of us are sinners. When we do wrong things instead of following God, we think that will make us happy. And it might seem to make us happy for a little while, but in the end, those wrong things will always make us and other people sad. Also, because the world is fallen and full of sin, sometimes other things happen which make us sad, like big storms, or, or that time I tripped over the dog and fell and my toy steam shovel broke. So as long as we live here in this world, we can't always be happy. But then my mom said something really amazing. Even though we can't always be happy, she said, we can always have joy. And that's even better. And that's our word of the day, joy. When we talk about having joy or rejoicing, we usually just mean being happy. But my mom explained that in the Bible, the joy which God's people have is something a little different. Joy is still a good feeling, kind of like being happy, but it's specifically a good feeling which comes from God, and which we feel when we look at God. Do you remember how a little while back we learned about the fruit of the Spirit? Well, part of the fruit of the Spirit one of the things which God creates in all of his people is joy. And then the Bible tells us, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. The Bible tells us that even when things in this world scare us or make us sad, we can still have joy in the Lord. You see, God's love for us is perfect, and it never changes. He loves us so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for us and to rise again from the grave. We can always trust that he is watching over us 
and that his plan for us is good, and that someday Jesus will come again, and we'll live with him in glory. No matter what else happens which might make us sad, God never changes, and he never stops loving his people. So we can always look to him and be joyful. Now, are you all ready to learn about a new psalm in our Bible time? I know I am. So I better log off for now so I can watch too. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great week. Hello, friends. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed Jimmy's jokes and his word of the day. So today we're going to be continuing our series on the book of Psalms, which is a book in the Bible that we've been learning about the past few weeks. One of the things we've learned is that King David, the same David from David and Goliath, who was a shepherd, is a person who wrote many, many of the Psalms in the Bible. And today's Psalm that we are going to read is Psalm 100. Now, if some of you guys are in Miss Debbie's class for Sunday school, or you have been in Miss Debbie's class in the past, you might recognize this Psalm because some of the time Miss Debbie teaches Psalm 100 to the kids in her class. So at the end, when we read it, if you know it, you should go on ahead and say it right along with me, okay? But first, we're going to read our story and it's called, God, you fill us up with joy. Looks like the people are all getting onto a bus. I wonder where they're going. Today, when we were driving out in the country, God, I saw a herd of cows and a flock of sheep. There's the herd of cows and the flock of sheep. And then suddenly up from a field of grass flew a whole big bunch of birds. My father said they were larks. And when you see a group of larks, you call it an exaltation of larks. So today, God, I saw a herd of cows a flock of sheep, and an exaltation of larks. That's kind of a funny word, isn't it? Because if you think about talking about a group of animals, like we said, a herd of cows or a flock of sheep, but an exaltation of larks, that's so interesting. My father said a group of larks is called that because exaltation means being lifted up with praise and joy. And did you see how joyful those larks acted? They were swooping and singing as if to praise you and say, we are your larks, God. You made us and we belong to you. You know what, God? I think a group of your people should be called an exaltation too. Like this. It's an exaltation of people. You know why, God? Because when we tell you how wonderful you are, it's like our thoughts are flying out to you. And God, you fill us up with Joy! 
Did you know that God fills us up with joy? You make us want to shout and sing to you. You make us glad to do our work for you. I like it when I know something, God. Positively know it for sure. And here are some things that I know. You are God, and you are in charge of us, like a shepherd watching over his sheep. We are your people, God. You made us, and we belong to you. So we come together to thank you. We come together to let our words fly up to you and say how wonderful you are. God, you are so good and you have so much love for us. There's more than enough to go around and it lasts and lasts and lasts. Long ago, when the old, old people were just little tiny babies, God, you were just the same as you are now. You loved your people way back then, just like you love them today. And a long, long time from now, in the future, when all the little babies that I know are all grown up, God, you will still be the same. We know you will love us forever, God. We are your people. I have a question for you all. Did any of the pictures in here remind you of something? Well, if you've ever been to family camp or all church camp, these pictures in here kind of reminded me of that. So I think what was happening, if I go back to one of the very first pages, the people getting onto the bus, there's a little sign down here that says, First Community Church Retreat. So it looks like they're all going away for a weekend to spend time together and to praise the Lord. Let me get to the picture at the very end. You see this picture here? The one where they're all coming together to sit and to praise the Lord together. Anyways, that just reminded me of family camp and all church camp. And that reminded me about how much fun we have when we're all together. And I just wanted to let you guys know that I miss you so, 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 so much. And I can't wait till I get to see you all in person again. All right, well, I'm going to read you Psalm 100. And guess what? This chapter, Psalm 100, only has five verses in it. So I can read the whole thing and it's not even that long. Which is why I think Miss Debbie picked it as a great psalm to memorize because you can memorize the whole thing and that's what she's done with her classes before. So Psalm 100 starts out, shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. 
Worship the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs. Hey, we do that, don't we? We worship the Lord with gladness and we sing songs to him. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Have you guys ever said thank you to God for something? Have you guys ever praised God before? For the Lord is good and his love endures or lasts forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations, which means that the Lord is always going to be with us no matter what. And that's it. That was it. Psalm 105 verses. I just love how the first verse starts where it says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. That very first verse is calling all the earth, the entire earth, to shout to the Lord with praises and with songs of joy. All right, well, thank you for joining me for our Bible time. We're now going to go take our offering and prayer. So I'm going to get all my books put away. I'll get my guitar all set up and then we'll start our offering time. All right, I'm all set for offering. If you would like to get a basket of your very own, you can. It might not look exactly like this. It might be a wicker basket, but it also might be a bowl from your kitchen, a plastic tub from your room, or even the lid to a plastic tub. So if you would like to get a basket or a bucket or a bowl for your own offering time, wherever you are at, I'm going to put on some music. And when you get back and when the music is over, we'll start our offering.
It's like I'm living for the first time. Finally living for the first time. It's like I'm living for the first time. Finally living for the first time. It's like I'm living for the first time. So we're all ready to start offering. If you would like with your basket, you can take your hand and gently touch the bottom of the basket. Some friends like to touch their heart first and then touch the bottom of the basket. And that tells Jesus, Jesus, I'm going to give you my heart today, which is a very special offering that you can give to Jesus. And when you're doing that, you're telling Jesus that you love him. Okay, so now we are going to pray and I'm going to use Psalm 100 during our prayer time today. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to keep the Bible out here and open for me to look at to help me pray because I know some of you guys know this Psalm really, really well from being in Miss Debbie's class, but I actually don't know this Psalm very well. So I'm going to use the help of the Bible to be able to read parts of it and use them during our prayer today. Put your hands in the air. Put your hands in your hair. Get ready for prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for giving us joy. God, you fill our whole hearts with joy. And that's because you love us so much and you care for us. God, we shout to you with joy and we praise you. God, we praise you with song. 
We worship you, Lord, with gladness. We love you and we thank you so much for loving us. God, you made us and we know that we are yours. We belong to you. Thank you so much for making us, for loving us, and for letting us be a part of your family. God, you're like a shepherd, and we are like the sheep of your pasture. You take care of us, you know what we need, and you help us. God, we want to come to you with everything that's on our hearts. We want to be able to talk to you and tell you everything about our day, and we know that we can. But God, we also know that we want to come to you with joyful songs, with praise, and with thanks. God, we know that you are good, and we know that your love will last forever. Your love never, ever ends. And God, we know that you are always with us. You have always been with your people, all the way from the very first person that you made until the very last person who's going to live on this earth before you create the new heavens and the new earth. God, thank you so much for your love. Thank you that you fill our hearts with peace and with joy. We love you so much, God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me for our prayer time, for our offering time. Even though it can be kind of noisy because we're in the middle of a city, right? But even though it's a little bit noisy outside, we can still worship God. We can still pray to God because God always hears our prayers, right? All right, well, now that we're done with offering and prayer, it's time to head over to learn about a new missionary for Miss Kara. And then we'll head over to the craft room to hear about a craft from Amanda. I'll see you guys when you get back. Good morning, Park Street Kids. I'm Miss Kara here for another Missions Moment. First, a question. What activities do you like to do? Do you like playing soccer? Or maybe playing with Legos? Or playing on the playground? What about dancing? Well, Today, I'd like to tell you about a missionary who loves sharing the love of Jesus with her neighborhood kids. Kids who like to do all those same activities too. This missionary lives in a place in the world where it's safe for us to say her name. So I can tell you, her name is Carolyn. This is Carolyn Cummings in uh, Nairobi, Kenya. As Carolyn said, she's in Nairobi, Kenya. Boston and Park Street are right here. And this is where Kenya is on the continent of Africa. If we were going to take an airplane to fly to go visit Carolyn, it would take us about 13 hours. Well, that's about the same amount of time it would take us to get to the Middle East. Carolyn is in Kenya sharing the love of Jesus with people who are far away from Boston. Now, while her official job is to help oversee missionaries who are in Kenya. One of her favorite things to do is to have the neighborhood Kenyan boys and girls over to her house on weekends. Now before the pandemic, and we all needed to start social distancing, the local Kenyan kids would pile into Carolyn's house for lunch on Sundays. She'd make them a lunch of stew, bread, bananas, and cookies. After they'd eat lunch, they'd have a Bible study and prayer time where the kids would learn about God and have a chance to pray for each other. 
On Saturdays before the pandemic, she'd also attend the kids' soccer games, cheer on the sidelines, and she would even get to watch the kids' ballet performances. While she's had to stop having the kids over because of the pandemic, she is still able to go into work. I am still able to go into work and uh, there's not a lockdown. There is a curfew in the evenings, but that's not really affecting me. We do have to wear masks when we go out in the streets and I have my nice coordinated pink mask, of course. However, she really misses having the kids over on weekends. The thing I can't do is have the children from Kibera come to my house every Saturday. Many of them are suffering uh, food shortages because their parents are not working. So we've been handing out food packages and I'd really appreciate prayer for that. Like Carolyn said, because there's a food shortage, which means that the kids don't have enough food, her agency is helping to pass out food bags to the kids and their families so that they'll have enough to eat. Even though Carolyn is missing the kids, she's still finding a way to show them the love of Jesus by helping give their families food. You know, you are also probably missing being able to be with your friends. But did you know that you too can share the love of Jesus with your friends? Even if you can't be together, you can draw a picture for a friend. You can video chat with them. Hi, Amanda. Oh, hi there, Miss Cara. How's it going? Oh, it's going so well. I called to see how you are doing. Oh, Miss Cara, that's, that's so nice of you. I, I, well, I'm doing great. Actually, I have a really good... You can even say a prayer for them just like the kids who go to Carolyn's house do for each other. Let's pray that the pandemic will end quickly so that the kids can come back to Carolyn's house and that kids everywhere can get back to dancing and playing soccer. Bye everyone, see you next time. So now I've gotten that heart cut out 
and how this is going to work is we're going to take uh, uh, this top piece of paper and we will glue it just around the outside edges like that, just like that, but not on the bottom and not anywhere in the middle either, just on the outside edges, the top and the sides. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have this paper and see, watch, it's going to go in and out like that. And, and do you see how the heart fills up? Because that is showing God filling up our heart with joy. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put some color on this pink piece of paper. Make it super, super colorful so that when we slide it in and out, it's going to be like so many colors filling up the heart. Great, I love these colors. Okay, so, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to practice sliding these colors on this paper underneath to see how it fills up the heart. So, so let's try it. Okay, and we try to sneak it under and push, 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 push. Oh, look at it, oh, it's so great. D did you see how it filled up the heart there? Okay, let's try it again, I'll, I'll pull it out. Oh, look at that. It's, it's just filling up the heart. And that's exactly what God does. He fills us up with joy. So some of the time when you try to move this and if you try to push it in, some of the time this top part of the paper can get stuck on the heart. So, so I just kind of bent up the, the little tip of the heart right there just to make sure that this paper didn't get stuck when I was doing that. Okay, now I'm going to glue it. All right, now my background and my coloring page are glued together. But remember, only put glue on the side, the top, and the other side. Don't put any glue in the middle here or on the bottom. Because if you do that, then this top page will be stuck to the bottom page, and then your colorful paper over there won't be able to slide in and out. So just make sure that you only put glue on the very top and side edges. Oh, I love it! And I especially love how God fills us up with joy. Oh, and also, don't forget, you can add stickers and also color the sky in the background if you want. And maybe add some clouds or a sun or trees or flowers. You can get really creative with it. All right. Well, I hope you had a good time in craft today. See you next time. Bye! Oh, hey guys. Welcome back. I hope you learned about a new missionary from Miss Cara during the missions moment. And I hope you had fun with Amanda during craft time. All right, so now we're gonna sing a few songs and we're gonna start off with a song that we haven't sung in a long time, I think. It's called, This Little Light of Mine.
light of mine. about how God fills us up with joy. So I want us to sing, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. shared with you all last week is our hymn is take my life and let it be and it is hymn number 585 which is 585 in our hymnal so here it is 
right here. And let me remind you what we've been learning the past few weeks. So I'll set it down now and I'll leave it open here just in case I need to look at it. So the very first verse says, take my life and let it be consecrated. So we have to make C's with our hands, consecrated Lord to thee. So this first verse is saying, God, I want you to take my whole life and I want my life to be consecrated to you. Do you guys remember what consecrated means? Consecrated means to set apart for something special. So in this song, we're asking God, God, I want you to take my life and make it set apart, especially, very specially for you, God. I want my whole life to be just for you. And then we also learned verse two. And in verse two, we're starting to talk about parts of our body. So the very first part says, take my hands, and let them move at the impulse of thy love. So in this part, we're saying, God, I want you to take my hands and use them to serve you. Do you guys remember what the word impulse meant? So in this case, an impulse is something that changes you. So we're saying, God, your love changes me. And because your love changes me, I want to follow you and I want to serve you. I want to do things for you. So God, take my hands and let me use them to help you. And the next part says, take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Do you guys remember how I said last week, if I'm just standing here in this room all by myself right now, am I able to tell anybody about Jesus if I'm just in here all by myself? Well, maybe kind of. Like maybe I could be on the phone with somebody and talking with somebody. But let's just pretend I don't have a phone or a computer or anything with me. So I'm just in a room by myself. Could I be telling people about Jesus? Well, not really because I'm all in here by myself, right? So what this part is saying is we need to use our feet to serve God, to follow God and to love God. And how can we do that? Well, we can move with our feet, right? So we can use our feet to take us places, to go to places where we can love people or we can tell people about Jesus. So another thing that I thought of in the middle of singing last week is we can also use our feet to dance, right? And when we worship God, when we praise him, when we dance, we're also showing God how much we love him. All right, so let's do all of verse two together. Ready? It says, take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. And then now the feet. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee, swift and beautiful for thee. Awesome job! So the first verse is us saying, God, take my whole life and let it be special to follow you. And the second verse is all about saying, God, I want you to take my hands and my feet I want to use my body to follow you. Whatever you want me to do, you want me to go somewhere to tell people about you, 
like being a missionary, if you want me to make a card for somebody or do something with my hands to love somebody else, I will do it, God. All right, so let me play a note and we can sing through it together. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to today with the book, God, you fill us up with joy, is when we're full of God's joy and God's love, we just want to praise him. So we're saying, God, take every moment and every day of my life, and I want it to be filled with never stopping, never ending praise. All right, let's sing it again. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise, let them flow in ceaseless Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Swift and beautiful for thee. Awesome job, guys. All right, so next week, we're going to start learning verse three. I can't wait. All right, well, that wraps it up for our music time during Children's Church. So let's head over to my house and let's check out Amanda's tomato plant. See you there. Hello, friends. Welcome to my house. I've got a sweatshirt on, I've got a nice cozy hat on, because it's starting to get cold outside, isn't it? So I'm starting to dress up a little bit when I go outside. All right, so let's get our update on Amanda's tomato plant. Wow, friends, look at this. Oh, this is so exciting. All right, so we have this big one right here. We have two more up here, so that makes one, two, three. Let's go check over on this side. All right, we have another one, four, and then we have some really tiny baby ones. We'll see if they get bigger. Five, and then where were the other two? I'm trying to remember. 
they were super little oh here they are six seven although i think these are the same ones that i showed you guys last week and they haven't really grown so they're probably not going to get any bigger but at the very least isn't this so exciting this guy oh i'm so excited for this friends all right well i guess i'm still going to be giving you guys tomato updates for well at least next week right because it's still growing pretty well isn't it all right well i hope you guys had a great time in children's church today i hope you have a great day and i hope you have a great week see you next time